Yes, hello everyone and welcome to all our West Australian football fans to another edition of Around the Waffle, the official podcast of the West Australian Football League. We are counting the days to round nine and around that could shape the setup of the final five as we approach the halfway mark of the season. Paul Persick with you in the Back Chat studios, whether you're listening on wherever you get your podcasts or on the Back Chat YouTube channel. And it's a thrill to be joined today by Jules Subiaco, Premiership player, boundary rider for the ABC when they had the Waffle broadcast. He returned to the box on Monday for seven. Rod Willett, he joins me here today. Rod, welcome. Yes, thanks very much, Paul, and uh, great to be on Around the Waffle. I've heard a lot about it, and it's fantastic to be on the show. We've got a big uh, show, make no mistake about that. We've got Brendan Donaldson joining us from South Fremantle. He'll be set to go in just a little bit. Before we do, of course, this uh, links to the club that you played for, Subiaco. Uh, Peter Burton, a legend of the club, sadly left us uh, a few days ago. Uh, a real star at uh, Subiaco during the 60s and 70s. Yes, uh, a real legend around the club, a fantastic player, and one of the great things about Peter is uh, he had uh, three boys that ended up uh, playing for Subiaco as, as, as well with, uh, you know, Big Spider, uh, Trav Burton and Jay Burton. And uh, a big shout out to Mother Teresa as well. They were fantastic uh, people around the club. And uh, Pete is over in America, so I think the boys are over in America getting all, the, all, the, all that sort of thing fixed up and done. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's a great player and I'm sure Subiaco will have the uh, black armbands uh, this weekend. Certainly will. Uh, we do send our best to uh, the Burton family at this time. Now, South Fremantle, another one of the uh, big clubs. They've got a big game on Sunday against West Perth at Pentanet Stadium. Danger game for their season. And joining us is one of their star players. He wears the number 16 for the Bulldogs, Brendan Donaldson. He's good enough to join us here today. Brendan, welcome along to the show, mate. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. Great pleasure to have you on the show, Brendan. Great uh, performance by the Bulldogs on Monday at the WAC. And now you've got another big test against the reigning Premiers who you've shared some great encounters with in recent times, including the draw last year. Yeah, we've had a couple of big battles with West Perth. I remember a few years ago, um, we sort of had those prelims as well. We, we came up against them in. So, yeah, it should be a, a big game there and um, up at Joondal up. So, yeah, really excited for it. What about uh, the form leading up to this game? Of course, with the uh, with the two put, with the two game salary cap breach still hanging over the club's head, it's always an important game each week. M- much more so, especially with the position that the club's in. Would it be fair to say the main message is just keep on winning? <laughs> Pretty much, in in easy words, it is. Like really, that we just need to, to take each game as it comes and just get the wins on the board. Um, you know, that's a little bit out of our control now, so there's not much we can do, but. Um, we just got to go out every week um, and, and win, which, you know, to be honest, we were doing that in previous years as well, regardless of the, the issues pre-season or not. So, um, yeah, we're just going to go out on the weekend and, and give our best and hopefully we get the result. Brendan, when you look at the ladder, you've, um, you know, you're on eight points, I suppose, or 12 points after the, the, the weekend. Is it hard to get yourself up each week, knowing that, you know, you're probably, you know, four games out of it with a bit of percentage? Is, is it tough mentally to get yourself up each week? Um, I don't even think so necessarily. I mean, the fact that we, I think we took a lot of confidence out of beating East Freo on the weekend for a team that got so much momentum. Um, they're sitting right up there with the best in the comp at the moment. So we think our best can beat anyone. We've just got to bring that consistently, um, which we've probably struggled with early so far in the year. But we feel like things can turn around pretty quickly. Um, and, you know, I think if we keep winning, um, you know, you never know what can happen. Talk us through uh, another one of the players that could be uh, playing a starring role on the weekend. Caden Harbour in the Derby kicked three goals in the in the big wet over there at the Wacker on Monday. Uh, he's come into the side uh, like a house of fire. Yeah, we love Harbour. He's got he brings a lot of energy, um, which you probably saw from his celebrations. Um, he loves he loves celebration and kicking a goal. So yeah, he's a really exciting small forward. Um, he, it's sort of his first game back um, after a little stint in the twos, but. Yeah, he's really exciting, loves kicking a goal, um, and he brings a lot of forward pressure, which is something we probably haven't had too much of um, over the last few years. So, yeah, I think he's really kept his side, he's kept his spot inside now, and, yeah, hopefully he can do that again this weekend. What about uh, the rest of the season, uh, Donna? You've been in uh, good form up forward and playing a little bit as well uh, in midfield. Are you enjoying your football once again this season? Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Um, a bit of a different role playing up on the wing this year, so getting a bit more of the ball. Um, which I enjoy actually, um, and you get a bit more freedom up there. There's not, you know, you don't have a defender following you around all the time. So it's nice to sort of be up there, see the game a bit differently, and then you know go forward and kick a goal or two when I can. So 
no, loving it at the moment. And, um, yeah, I think hopefully that continues and, um, yeah, we get some wins on the board. Mate, probably some of the worst conditions that you would have had to play in in your life, I would, would assume, on, on Monday. Um, tell us what that was like and also give us your experience, what you did when the lightning come and you had to have that half an hour break. Oh, it was honestly one of the weirdest <laughs> games I've ever played in, to be fair. Um, the twos game looked quite uh, quite dry and um, the ground drains really well. So we were actually pretty excited to go out there and play some good footy. And then as soon as we walked out for the warm-up, it just started pouring down and started hailing. And, um, you know, it changed pretty quickly. All of our boots were waterlogged and the balls got soaked. Um, so, yeah, it turned into a wet weather game pretty quickly. And then... Um, yeah, it, it was really weird with that lightning. The only time I've, I've seen it before was actually in our reserve game at the Wacker last year. Um, so it's kind of creepy that it happened twice at that ground. But yeah, I've never experienced it before. So it was a little bit different having to go back up into the rooms for, for half an hour. We, you know, the umpire just sort of let us know that once they find out what the goal is, they'll, they'll come and communicate that with us. So I think it was about half an hour we had to wait in the rooms and then um, and then get back out on the ground. But yeah, it was probably came at a good time, to be honest, because I think East Fremantle were getting on top in our midfield a little bit. So it gave us another little break to reset um, and then go again. So I think it worked in our favour a bit. Did you get the cards out, mate, or, or what, what did you do for that time? No, we just sort of, we had a little bit of a, a rest, just sort of five, ten minutes, just, um, you know, just walking around, hydrating, um, having a chat. We jumped in our line groups just to make sure we could um, stay on top of sort of that first part of the quarter. Um, and then, yeah, it all it all came pretty quickly. Actually, we jumped into another warm up, so pretty much the the half time warm up that we normally do, we jumped straight back in that. And um, yeah, we we're out there pretty quickly. It was just another half time, really. Well, we hope the conditions are a little bit better on Sunday at Pentonet Stadium against West Perth, Brendan. Thanks very much for your time, mate. All the best for the big one on Sunday. No worries. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. That was Brendan Donaldson from South Fremantle. Imagine that. Imagine if the lightning policy was in effect in your days of playing. Would you like get out the cards or something like that? Well, I remember being down at East Fremantle one day and uh, it rained and actually hailed that hard that you couldn't see the footy coming towards you. My golly. So uh, it was uh, a game that I'll never forget. But, um, mate, footy's a, a game of all weather. Uh, you've got to be out there and prepared to play in any conditions. No doubt about it. Not just with the Frio Derby, but the Perth Derby on Monday as well. That got stopped as well. Mm, no, no. We've uh, had an amazing amount of weather in a couple of days, more than we've had in probably eight months. So Strange things happen in yes, football, no indeed. doubt about that. Well, we certainly hope the conditions are better for round nine on Saturday and Sunday. Of course, all games are live, free and in full on afl.com.au and on the AFL app. This is Around the Waffle, the official podcast of the West Australian Football League. All right, Rod, let's get into the five games. First off, West Coast taking on Subiaco in a morning match at 11.40 on Saturday at Mineral Resources Park in Lathlane. Now, even though these sides are separated by a huge margin on the ladder this season, the last three encounters haven't been uh, blowouts for Subiaco. When you look at it, the average margin has been around 20 points, only uh, some 23 in their last meeting in round 16 and another 28 in round 9 last year and by 20 in round 15 of 2021. And the Eagles' effort in the first half against against Swan Districts, a lot better than what we'd usually see. Well, mate, I want to have something hot off the press here. Ooh. But the West Coast Eagles, I've been told, are going to be struggling to put a side together against Subiaco on the weekend. That's a huge story. What, what about it? What, what could this possibly mean for the game? Um, well, if you ha- haven't got the players, mate, um, I suppose you can't put a, a side out in the field. So that's where they're at. Um, I think Subiaco are waiting for... Uh, notification, uh, but it's obviously got to go through you know all the channels and everything like that up at the uh, commission. But uh, there could it could be very tough for the Eagles um, uh, to put a side out there. We'll have to wait over the next uh, forty eight hours to see uh, what goes on. If the game does go ahead uh, for Subiaco again, their key is going to fall on their midfield. Liam Hickmott has been terrific. So too Zach Clark. He'd be an early favourite for the Sandover Medal with his form in the ruck, and in his early to mid thirties, he's showing that he hasn't lost a spring in his step. Well, mate, I was surprised he actually didn't play in the state game, to be honest, because mm-hmm. he's by far the most dominant uh, ruckman in the in the in the league. Uh, I know he's got a few knee issues, which he's had for you know quite some time now, but uh, certainly a great great win for Subiaco against uh, Peel on the weekend, and it's really put them back in that sort of top two frame. Uh, and to go down and beat uh, Peel down at Rushton Park. It's not called Rushton Park anymore, but uh, down at Rushton Park, and I think there was what ten. 
Fremantle Dockers players Ten, in the yeah, side. So right. a, a quite a considerable amount. And, you know, you're talking good players as well. Uh, they're not fringe players, some of those boys. I think they uh, would be playing if they were at another club, you know, AFL, somewhere else. So uh, a fantastic effort. And, you know, maybe Subiaco have just turned the corner a little bit. And, you know, uh, you would think they would have a win against the Eagles week, uh, this week. So, you know, puts them right up amongst that one too. They are right back uh, in the in, in contention for the double chance, especially with that uh, stretch of good wins. Uh, they've beaten Claremont, they've beaten West Perth and have beaten Peel Thunder. How far do you think they'll, they'll go as far as finishing in the five? Can they get in the top three? Well, it, uh, if they keep winning, like, uh, you know, uh, the motto goes, uh, there's certainly a, a big chance. And like I said, they're, they're, you know, they've really struggled in that ruck department over the last few years, uh, probably almost since... Um, you know, Zach had left, Zach Clark had left and, and gone to Melbourne. But, uh, you know, if he can keep playing and stay on the park and Sokol can keep on kicking goals and, you know, they've got a good midfield, a good mix, you know, forward and back. I'd expect Sokol to kick a bag uh, on uh, on Saturday if that game does go ahead. You could, We could both agree that Subiaco will win this one easily. I think you could tip that down. Yep, Subiaco is certainty to win that one pretty easily. But this one, this next game on Saturday at 2.10 at Revo Fitness Stadium is a hard one to pick. Claremont versus Peel Thunder, top spot on the ladder at stake. Yes, well, Claremont bounced back and, you know, uh, you take Jack Buller out of the side who went uh, through the mid-season draft. You take him out of the side, you wouldn't expect the, the team to dominate like they did, but yeah. they kicked a remarkable score and it didn't even look like they missed him. So... Uh, you know, they're back in form. Uh, they were probably a little bit average that, uh, leading up to that. But I think Press has had a, a bit of a serious word to a few of the boys, and uh, I think you'll find that they're back on track. So it should be an absolute great game yeah. and uh, probably the match of the round so far. Yeah, I'd have to say, uh, you were talking about Claremont, you know, dominating. Their forward options were so incredible. I mean, when you look at Manuel's back in the side, kicked five goals. Max Manier was good. Zach Mainwaring, I liked his game as well. Even though he only kicked two goals, he offers himself up so well on good leads. He's very quick uh, on the ball as well. So he's got great potential, Zach Mainwaring. Yeah, he's a bit like the old man, you know. He's a bit of a show show pony, um, but uh, you know he's 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 getting better with every game. I think that uh, they're starting to get a little bit more familiar. And you know, when a player like Jack Bullock goes out of the side, who was the obviously dominant forward, uh, other players have got to stand up, and that's a real uh, you know great thing to see from Claremont and shows a bit of character. As for Peel Thunder, of course, that loss to Subiaco won't haunt them that much. Even though they are, they are equal on top spot in the ladder with Claremont, they just got to find a way to adapt to those wet conditions because usually they're not a very strong wet weather side. But uh, Claremont, they can be at times, uh, especially with uh, that home ground advantage. Revo Fitness Stadium can really intimidate those travelling teams. Well, the thing about Revo as well, sometimes it doesn't hold the water real well. So right. if it uh, does get a lot of rain, obviously you could flip a coin on probably uh, who's going to win. But I think if it's dry... Uh, Claremont might be a little bit too strong, but you know, uh, how long since we've seen Peel at the top of the ladder? I can't actually remember when um, Peel Thunder have been, you know, top. Yeah, so well, like the previous you years, you'd think 2016, 2017, when they really had a firm hold on the competition. Yeah, well, I think they still had to fight their way up. I don't think they were ever, you know, um, a number one finisher. Having said that, who does win on Saturday? Should be a cracking game. Well, again, it, you, you, you know, you've got to do your tips a little bit later with. Uh, with Peel, because you just don't know who's coming in and out as far as uh, um, you know the AFL side goes. But uh, they seem to be in pretty good shape at the moment. But I'm going to go with uh, with Claremont, uh, probably the home ground. Yeah, I'm going to say Claremont as well, but only just should be a real cracker. Now, third game, the first of the Sunday games. This too is a real interesting one to pick on form. East Perth and East Fremantle up at lead of a Oval. East Fremantle needing a big lift after the loss in the Derby. East Perth, huge statement win last week against West Perth in the Perth Derby. They are riding high on confidence, the Royals under Ross McQueen. They are. Ross has done a great job after uh, being a fantastic coach at Claremont. You know, he's got premierships with Colts, premierships with the Reserves. And uh, now he's out in his own at uh, East Perth, and uh, he's doing a fantastic job. Uh, Ripper guy got a lot of time for him, um, and it's uh, but um, I think that they may not just be good enough to beat East Fremantle. I think East Fremantle are actually in some good form before the weekend, and you know how how much you take out of the weekend, the win loss. You know we have we talked about how the conditions are probably the worst that we we played in for some time, yeah. so you know taking something out of that is, is going to be a little bit difficult but I think East Fremantle will go back to their form prior to that and, and be a little bit too good. Yeah, they, they have to. They have to. I mean, yeah, they, they you know, were still in it for much of the game against South Fremantle in, in trying conditions but the problem was their 
cohesion up forward. That was a real problem. They just could not find a way around the likes of uh, Zach and Noah Strom in defence and also in the midfield as well. They're going to have to find a way to counter the influence of the likes of Schumacher, Crowden, Stan Wright, and even Angus Scott as well. That midfield for East Perth is AFL calibre with the way they've been playing. No, indeed. But, you know, when you looked at East Fremantle, uh, they just didn't have the players that had the, needed the composure in that, in that last quarter. They bombed it forward and they just kicked it straight to the opposition. And, you know, when you do that, you find it goes back over your head even quicker. So, uh, you know... Blokes like Leggett and uh, O'Reilly just really struggled to get into the game. And, and they're talls and, and bigs. And so, you know, they don't always have their best days on, on you know, those sort of tracks. So oh, I, I expect them to bounce back and, you know, they'll, they'll hit the form that You've they have gone beforehand. East You've gone East from Mandel? Oh, I'm going to go East from Mandel as well. But uh, it's going to be a very tough game, especially in what could be similar conditions, maybe a little bit cooler than what we had. Hopefully no rain and hail or lightning strikes. You can bet that. But uh, East from Mandel for the both of us. Uh, Swan Districts in Perth, the next Sunday game at 2.10 at Steel Blue Oval. Swan Districts, they got their first home win last week. Perth, they were absolutely trounced by the Tigers. Uh, this one's going to be a real interesting one. Maybe a hard one to pick as well because Swans this season, apart from that one win, they've struggled to get it done at home. Five times they've lost by less than 10 points. Yeah, I think Swans are just a little bit uh, a little bit better than Perth at the moment. Uh, you know, great to see Peter German back, you know, coaching in the Waffle. We're a fantastic coach at Subiaco and... Uh, even though he used to uh, give me a bit of a hard time with the microphone at, uh, <laughs> with the ABC back in the day on the boundary riding. Uh, Peter and I have had a love-hate relationship for quite a long time, but it's good to see him back here. Uh, I just think, you know, uh, wait a couple of years for Perth. Hopefully Pete sticks around for that. But I just think they lack that. The, the calibre of good players to, to be a threat at the moment. And looking at those players for Swan District, that can really make a difference. Jesse Turner's been fantastic, averaging some 30 possessions. I like the work of Jackson McLaughlin too, where ever since he's come into the league side a few weeks ago, he has really electrified uh, the Swan District's side, especially when you're looking at who can be desperate enough to get the side out of midfield into attack. Jackson McLaughlin is that key for the Swans. Indeed he is, and it's uh, great to see you know different people coming through and, and, and standing up. You know, Swans are, are probably going through that transition stage at the moment where they're trying to bring a fair bit of youth through uh, through Greg Harding and, and the work that he does all the time. But, uh, you know, I love Swan Districts at, at home. I used to hate it when I played uh, because, uh, you know, they're very verbal in the crowd, uh, Swan Districts, and that's what you've got to love about them. You know, the supporters get right behind it. They get in the can bar. They get verbal. And uh, I think that'll be enough to get them over the line. Yeah, Swans will, will be too strong in every area of the ground. Perth, I hope, will be competitive. You know, they were a couple of weeks ago against South Fremantle, but uh, the Swans will be too strong on their home ground. So we've both gone the Swans here. Last game, Sunday, 2.10 at Pentanet Stadium. This is a danger game in many senses for both West Perth and South Fremantle. West Perth, they can have the cliche premiership hangover all they want, but this is a must win against South Fremantle, who, like we said with Brendan Donaldson, have had great encounters, uh, the Falcons and the Bulldogs, in recent times. Yeah, it's funny, West Perth, you know, we, we talk about premiership hangovers and, and things like that, but they just don't have seemed to found the mojo mm. that they had last year. They they were very good, uh, you know, their back line matching up to their forward line. They had a really solid uh, midfield, but they just don't seem to have, uh, have found that again. Now, whether that's, you know, late starts or they haven't done a, you know, bigger pre-season and they're going to finish off better towards the end of the season. But they certainly need to get their season back on track really quickly and it's got to start this week. I think their connection with their forward line as well, I think uh, in, in recent losses, their midfielders have found the main option is Tyler Kytel up forward. I reckon they've just got to find more options up forward and, and they can have that. Even though they didn't have Keegan Knott last week in that loss to East Perth, they should bring him back in the side because he can be a secondary option up forward. Hmm. Well, I, I love Kytel. I think he's a, a very, very good player. I think it's a shame that he never actually had a crack at um, AFL. Oh, yeah. Now, that's probably his own doing. Um, there's no doubt that, uh, you know, um, he can be a little bit lazy at times, but he, he's certainly a, a fantastic football player. And they need him to be getting back to his best and, and leading the forward line because... You know, a lot of the forward line is structured around him because he is, you know, so devastating. And we've seen him kick bags of eight on regular occasions. And I think he needs to lead from the front. But the problem is he's going to be encountered with the likes of the Stroms, Noah and Zach, who can make a difference in that game. And that's why I'm going with South Fremantle. If, oh. if, if the Stroms can shut down Kytel on the West Perth forward line, then South Fremantle will be on the way to a big win. Will be a close game, though. I reckon it'll be down to the last couple of minutes, I reckon, over there at Pentanet Stadium. But I'm going with the Bulldogs. Yeah, well, like um, Bass and Dean Oval, um, West Perth love playing on their home deck. I know they haven't been at their best, but uh, that crowd again, 
uh, can do amazing things when you're on the ground playing footy. And I think the crowd might get them up and... They know it's uh, time to get moving as well, so they might get them over the line. If you've gone with West Perth to keep their premiership defence back on track, should be a great game. Now, uh, just before we wrap up, Rod, all the very best to you for the weekend, mate. Uh, tell us, you've been in- involved in recruiting uh, more recently as well, along with your return to the seven box. I have, mate. Um, pretty much as soon as I uh, finished playing uh, for Subiaco, uh, I got into recruiting. Um, I worked with the Brisbane Lions uh, in their early days, uh, which was fantastic. We managed to get... Uh, uh, three premierships out of that, so that was uh, an outstanding uh, uh, time and, and, and so good to be involved in. Uh, Brisbane were really struggling when they first come in and uh, we had our challenges and, um, you know, we uh, met some great people and along the way. Uh, so I worked for them for, for, for probably about seven or eight years. And then um, Scotty Clayton, who was involved uh, with uh, Brisbane back in the early days, uh, he w- was actually announced to work with Gold Coast and actually go through the whole rigmarole again yeah. and, and, and and put a Gold Coast team together. And he rang me up and said, Rod, you know, we need to do some special work again. So uh, he convinced me to, to come over and, and, and work for the Gold Coast. And I've pretty much been there since uh, their inception. And uh, it's very, very challenging. Uh, and I won't go through all the, all the difficulties that um, it is to actually get a team together and... You get the right blend and the mix of youth and uh, you know um, and age and and uh, get them all on the track and you know Gold Coast itself is a bit of a bit of a transient place. Everyone likes to go up there and have a good time. So trying to establish any sort of sporting team, uh, you know, let alone a, an AFL club, uh, has had its challenges. But uh, we're improving. Stewie's doing a great job, and uh, we're all behind him. And uh, hopefully. We can keep improving. Well, all the best for the rest of the season. Thanks very much for coming on and helping us out today. Uh, some great tips and great insight, as always, Rod. And we thank you uh, for all our, uh, our listeners and viewers uh, tuning in to uh, Around the Waffle for this uh, coming round, round nine. It's going to be an absolute ripper of a round. Make sure you uh, give us a thumbs up on our Facebook, Instagram, and uh, Twitter. Our socials are in operation. We really do appreciate that. And you can check us out on the Back Chat YouTube channel. We look forward to your company on Tuesday to review all the round nine action here on Around the Waffle, the official podcast of the West Australian Football League.